Hi everyone. There has been a lot of talk recently in the media in Ireland about what rights the unborn child has, should have, or shouldn't have. So today, I'm just going to give my two cents. This is aimed at Christians in particular. Above and beyond any political, social, physiological, or psychological reasoning that people present for their arguments, as Christians, we need to come back to the Word of God and rely entirely on the Word that Jesus has relayed to his church. This is the same Jesus who got down on his hands and knees all the way back in Genesis chapter 3, played around with the elements in the dirt, fashioned Adam, and breathed into him, you know, mouth to mouth resuscitation, and breathed Holy Spirit to animate him and bring him to life. This is the same Jesus who assumed the role of the great physician, performed the first surgery, and created Eve from Adam, looked them together and said, this is good, this is so, so good. Clearly, Jesus, as a father, as a creator, as a maker, is passionately pro-life, because he himself is the way, the truth, and the life. Life is who he is, Therefore, life is what he does. Therefore, life is what he champions above all else. In the body, in the soul, and in the spirit too. And this is the same Jesus who millennia later came as a baby in the womb of Mary. This experience couldn't have caused her a great physical or psychological ordeal. I mean, she was a teenager outside of marriage, who got pregnant in a society where she could have been pulled by the hair, thrown in the street, belted the rocks until she died, and no one would have bat an eyelid. In fact, they would have said, well done on getting rid of this Jezebel from our midst, leading our young men astray. Mary was a very strong woman. God assigned her the task of carrying this baby that she didn't ask for, that she didn't go looking for, that she didn't actually have any interest in pursuing originally. I mean, hello, read her first exchange with the angel Gabriel. She was not one bit excited about it. But she was obedient to carry what the Lord had impregnated her with. And as a result, Mary has quite possibly become the most famous woman in history. And let's think of Joseph. Raising a baby that he didn't not create, was not part of his family plan. In fact, when he first heard that Mary was pregnant, he thought, okay, well, you know, we'll do the whole marriage thing, but then I'll divorce her in secret. He had no intention of raising a child that was not his own. And it took, again, for the angel Gabriel to appear to him in a dream and say, listen, Joe, everything's fine. Mary's not messing around, playing the field with the milkman. This is a God thing. It's a good thing. And Joseph is probably one of the biggest unsung heroes in the Bible. Sorry, but no one ever talks about Joseph. However, through obedience, he humbled himself to raise what God had ordained. He took this child he didn't ask for, that he didn't go looking for, that he hadn't planned on, and he taught Jesus what it was to be a man. He taught Jesus about respecting people. He taught Jesus about God the Father. He brought Jesus to football practice or to karate training. He sowed his life, his energy, and his resources into Jesus, not because Jesus was on his to-do list or his plan, but simply because he recognized that Jesus was a blessing from God. Now, I know that a lot of people are focusing on the bad cases, the X cases, the genuine hurt, disappointments, and confusion that people have suffered and endured, and that's what they're using to propel their pro-choice arguments. However, as Christians, we believe that when Jesus hung on the cross and he took every sickness on his body, every fatal fetal abnormality on his body, every rape, every molestation, every grief, every suicide, 
every threat to emotional, physical, spiritual, or sexual health issue on himself. He said, it is finished. He died, he buried that in Hades, he rose again, and he left the wickedness and the shame and the sickness and the torment and the sin and the wickedness and the cruelty in the grave. He's not dismissive of people's pain. He felt your pain before you did. He's not unaware of the evil that people do. He took the evil on himself. So much so that Father God had to look away and Jesus asked, why have you forsaken me? Why can't you stand to look at me? Jesus knows what it is to feel every pain, grievance and affliction that anyone has ever felt because in that climactic moment on the cross, he took it upon himself, but he buried it and he said, it is finished. So body of Christ, the word of God says that Jesus dealt with the totality of human error and maliciousness and deviancy. And that the sacrifice, which comes through blood for evil, has been totally paid for. Therefore, we cannot put the death penalty on unborn children and blame them for the sins of others when Jesus himself has already paid the price and said that it is finished. And to those of you who think, maybe I'm not sympathetic, maybe I'm not listening to the other side, my three siblings and I all had very difficult births. Before, during, and for some time after. In fact, unfortunately, my older brother was born crassly deformed and dead. My own birth caused my mother significant physical pain, um, as did my other siblings. And I am so appreciative of my parents that although it was hard, and although it was nasty, and although life, which is supposed to be a gift, brought a heck of a lot of pain <laughs> physically and emotionally with it before, during, and after, that they were strong enough to say, life is a gift, we're going to keep fighting, we're not giving up, we're staying the course. And even more than that, I thank Jesus that long before I ever could have conceived of who he was, he loved me so incredibly and totally and perfectly that he has sowed his life into me and then blessed me so that I might bless others. And every life is a gift. Every life has the potential for greatness, not just for oneself, but also for communities, for nations, for countries, for, for towns. It could be microcosmic, it could be macrocosmic. Jesus, as life itself, with a capital L, has put his thumbprint on every person that he has made. He loves them completely. He has ordained their days. His thoughts for them and for us are more numerous than the sand on the seashore. So much that we could never, in an infinity of eternities, fathom it. That is how much Jesus loves every single one of us. So be respectful of those who have suffered. Be respectful of those who've had abortions and are fighting on behalf of that cause. But please, as the body of Christ, vote no to repealing the eighth because a no is a yes to life itself and a vote yes to himself. Be blessed.